little glitch here with our computer and away we go. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our talk on nonviolent communication. Oh, Michael, your camera is off. Oh, goodness. Thank you. No, let me start over. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our talk on nonviolent communication. We will be referring to it as NVC. Uh, so glad you're here. Good to see you. We have, have a lot of people showing up from around the world, especially in Australia and New Zealand, where it's, I think, around 11 a.m. their time. And uh, often people are arriving from parts of Asia and Europe. And uh, always great to see you all. Uh, today, um, before we get started, uh, if you haven't heard the news, um, there was some quite violent communication that occurred at a school in Texas. So I would like to take a few moments of silence. Uh, kind of too late for the kids, but for the parents and the relatives and the people at the local store and their neighbors and the whole country and beyond. Let's just, let's take a moment and take a breath. Okay, uh, we will explain why we had a school of fish on the opening slide in a few moments. Now, I might be speaking a bit faster than usual so we can get everything in and a recording will go on our YouTube page in a few days so you can watch it there at a slower speed. I want to let everybody know ahead of time that a crown uh, on one of my front teeth, this one, popped out and it's in there temporarily. So if it pops out, uh, I'll have to stop and catch it. Uh, though these are one of the things in life that you don't expect to be presenting uh, a webinar and out goes your tooth, but maybe it'll stay in. So uh, again, um, uh, please, if you would put your name, where you're from, if you're with an organization, put it into chat. We really like to uh, see where people are coming from around the country. It's always very uh, in a way exciting to see how we were able to reach a lot of people. Uh, okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, what do you do when you want to get good at a new language? Put it in the chat if you want. Uh, what do you do if you want to get good at a sport? A musical instrument. Okay, I see a lot of people putting an answer. Okay, what do you do if you want to get good at a relationship? I don't see so many entries. Well, who ever heard of practicing relationships? Yes, somebody said communication is, of course, very important. So why do athletes run through uh, tires on a playing field? You, you don't see the tires when there's a game on. Well, it's a practice to build a memory that allows for fluid movement. Tonight, we're going to practice some relationship skills. 
So if you're new to NVC, we are certain that you will agree with hundreds and hundreds of teachers, administrators, social service workers with whom we've worked who have said this work makes a huge difference in their classrooms, their organizations, and the people in their lives. And we recently received an endorsement from the head of a middle school where we've been bringing the NVC work for several months into the spring and, and beginning in the winter. And the administrator said, in your 33 years in education, no social, so, social and emotional learning program had ever made as big an impact as learning nonviolent communication. So we are almost an entirely volunteer organization. We all work remotely and we all work long hours because we're seeing that this work can lay the foundation for schools and homes to be a safe place for children and even adults. Thus, we're going to put our donation link in the chat and we'd like you to please put it in your browser because we believe you are gonna walk away with some very valuable life skills. So please put this link in your browser. If you begin to practice the simple exercises we will show tonight, the language of nonviolent communication will change the way you think and speak. Imagine that. Can something affect the way you think and speak in an hour or so? I think you'll see this by the end, especially at the end where we do an exercise where just about everybody has an aha experience. So if you have a child or you work with children, or if you ever were a child yourself. What we will be sharing tonight is essential, especially for creating a safe space for children. What you may ask is this emphasis on safe spaces for children. Well, you'll see as we go on that this work can create an extraordinary safety net for children who are experiencing trauma. Stay with us. Once I started NBC, this question came up. What would my life have been like if I had been told that there was a way to communicate with others and myself that would create more ease and harmony in my life? Without a substantial life skill like NBC, a child can wind up being at the effect of trauma for a lifetime. And next week on the 31st, our webinar will be on trauma, neuroscience and resilience. And what you will learn tonight are ways to build resilience in the face of trauma. You'll see as we go on. My childhood was one of prolonged and chronic neglect. There was no resilience building. I'd like to share a few things that affect a child who was brought up with such neglect. Me. So in my home, there were no books. No one read to me. There was no game playing, no encouragement, no consistent guidance, no sense of achievement, a sense of not being significant, little one-on-one -on -one time, no modeling of problem solving, ample criticism, inability to bond, and no belief that life has meaning. Tough childhood. Well, next week we'll be explaining how um, neglect is one of the most severe forms of trauma. And I've struggled throughout my life to bond with people because I had no reference for bond. I know that if I had learned this communication skill Early on in my life, things would have been much different. You'll see. Next week, May 31st, we'll take a much closer look at what a child needs to grow into a healthy adult. Isn't that the greatest hope for any child? It'll also be at eight o'clock. So we gave training sessions that reached over 500 schools during the 18 months when they were closed here in New York City. And during that time, we completed a full revision of our curriculum, which is based on the material you will hear tonight. The latest version of our curriculum contains both in-class and remote options. Now, we want to share this work with entire school communities that don't have the funds to cover even our basic expenses. So again, your donation will help us do that and much more. Once more, here's the donation link in the chat. And again, we'd like you to invite everyone to share your name, where you're from, uh, if you're with an organization or a group, and uh, just if you happen to be an interested individual. Now, tonight's presentation is based on a book called Nonviolent Communication. We live in a very fractured world, lots of violence. And there's a tremendous amount of violent behavior, but there's also the prevalence of verbal violence. 
often the things we say to each other are hurtful. Tonight, we're going to look at how we can live without hurting others or being hurt. We have seen how the NBC work creates a safety net so our feelings don't get hurt. You'll see as we continue. And again, as I believe uh, Gianna mentioned, we have a survey which asks for your feedback. So please put the survey in your browser. Your responses help us grow better and improve. Let's go to the next slide. So NVC, it's a life skill that creates greater connection amongst others and with ourselves. And NVC is in its essence, a practice of expressing one's needs and feelings without blame or judgment and listening empathically. At the Relationship Foundation, we work with schools and organizations to support them in finding ways to alleviate trauma and build relationship-based cultures. And NVC is a component of this process. And thanks to neuroscience, we have learned that human brains remain malleable even past childhood. So even us adults are finding new tools like tonight to tweak, alter, and rewire our brains for less stress, greater health, more emotional resilience, and enhanced learning skills. NVC is one of those tools. And when we are deeply immersed in an experience, areas of our brain that regulate attention form new connections. The brain is constantly monitoring our thoughts and our thoughts make chemicals based on the way we think. Feelings arrive based on what we are thinking. And, we keep, and when we keep thinking the same thoughts over and over, it creates a state of being. And for many people, it creates a personality trait. If you have a thought about insecurity, what would you feel? Insecure, right? The moment you feel insecure, it will drive more insecure thoughts. And then you think and you say over and over, I feel insecure, you become what? The more we think thoughts, the more we are programming the mind toward a particular destiny. And the redundancy of this thinking and feeling conditions the mind to memorize that state until it becomes a habit. Tonight, you will see how we can break the habit of the thoughts that we think and speak. 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 is a set of memorized behaviors, emotional reactions, beliefs, perceptions, and attitudes that function just like a computer program. And we are subconsciously becoming the mind of these behaviors. NVC can support us to uh, take control of our thoughts. Tonight, we will illustrate how using this rich communication tool can promote healthy neural development that fosters greater emotional resilience, satisfaction, and a more fulfilled life. Science literacy is essential to making sense of behavior, especially for parents and educators. In a week, the same time, we'll give another webinar focused on the neuroscience and resilience. So the link for the webinar next Tuesday at 8 p.m. should be in the chat right now. now. Let's go to the next slide. So although this process of neural development is lifelong, in children, it happens at a much more rapid pace than what we experience as adults. So with all the violence that's going on today, it's vital for children to learn skills such as NVC early on. Think about it. As adults, we have millions of memories and experiences, but children have much more room in their brains to absorb new information, like the skill we're going to present tonight. Young children's brains are like sponges. A baby's brain grows at an astonishing rate of 1% a day after birth. And by 90 days, it's increased 64%. And before the age of six, a child can learn five languages and speak them fluently. Wouldn't you agree that children will be more well off if they learned positive communication skills early in their lives? For those of you of any contact with children, we believe tonight what you will learn, what you will uh, experience will inspire you to uh, help us get our work into schools and organizations. And we are especially focused on schools and we will be referring to children tonight quite a bit. So it's vital to get a skill like NVC into schools at an early age. 
In the trauma response of education movement, the primary tenet is that children need connection. One caring, stable adult is essential for this. There's a lot of material out there, social, emotional, this and that. Intervention is one stable, caring adult. That can change everything. It can change their brain structure. And we'll talk about that next Tuesday. So where do we find the language that fosters positive, thriving, fulfilling, and rewarding relationships? Here it is in one amazing foundational book. Many of the everyday words some of us use are judgmental. Don't most fights begin with aggressive words, putting others down, making snide remarks, judging, making fun. Did we ever think that making fun is not fun? Oh, I was just making fun. Hmm. How does one feel? We'll look at feels very closely. Sure. Okay, tonight, we are going to introduce the basics of NVC, which we believe is the world's most effective life skill. This presentation will focus on the essential elements of NVC, and we will do a few short practice using this revolutionary language skill. As children, we modeled our behavior based on what we observed from the adults in our lives, as well as society's norms. Some of us may wish to explore a new model other than the one we observed and grew up with. What drove me to learn this work is the thought, what would my life have been like if I had been introduced to such effective communication skills growing up? What if I had been given a relationship roadmap? <coughs> I believe tonight you'll see that NVC is in fact a way to navigate any relationship. Let's go to the next slide. This is our information. Uh, we've been introducing our relationship skills program in schools since 2008. And we also bring our work to community service organizations. We work with child advocacy, advocacy centers, which by the way, if you haven't heard of CACs, they serve a tremendous support for children and they're in every state. If you've heard of the CACs, here comes the tooth. Uh, okay, if you've heard of C CACs, uh, put, put your uh, name in the chat because we'd like to tell you what we're doing with them. Um, we had a program director from the Missouri Child Advocacy Centers contact us after seeing this webinar that you're seeing tonight. And we wound up giving, uh, not too long ago, uh, webinars over periods of days to uh, child advocacy centers in 114 counties in Missouri. Now, if you don't know what a child advocacy center is, we call them CAC, write this down. A child is in an unfortunate situation. Somehow the child is removed from the home. What happens? Well, a child goes to the police station, goes to the courthouse, goes to a lawyer, a forensic best investigator, a counselor, and on and on and on. What's happening? A child gets more traumatized. CACs have all these departments in one location. Can you imagine that? They started in the 90s. The CAC should be a household word along with the PCAs, Prevent Child Abuse America. We're very grateful to have worked with them. Uh, in a month, we're going to the Pennsylvania CACs. If you have a CAC in your state, let them know about this. Let's go to the next slide. Empathy. We're gonna look at empathy from an NVC point of view. We'll see how it can create a path to greater understanding and connection. Well, what is empathy? Here's the dictionary definition to share and understand the feelings of another. How can you share someone's feelings unless they tell you what they're feeling? For instance, do you know what I'm feeling? I'm in front of a group of people I can't see, people from the four corners. Am I nervous? Am I self-conscious? I gotta take the tooth out. Am I uncomfortable? You can only really know what I'm feeling if I tell you, and I am experiencing some of these feelings. Nervous, self-conscious, uncomfortable, but I'm also feeling motivated and inspired and grateful to be here. 
So we can have more than one feeling at the same time. You'll see more about that as we go on. And today we're gonna to look at feelings from a whole new perspective. Next slide, we're gonna look at what are called empathy blockers. One upping. Somebody says they had a tough day. What, what do many of us do? Thinking we're making conversation. You had enough, you had a bad day. Let me tell you about mine. Uh, advising, fixing. Uh, has anybody ever received unrequested advice from a parent, a spouse, a friend? Fixing. Educating. You know, there's a good book you can get on uh, how, to, how to deal with this situation. We analyze, you know, every time I speak to you, it's the same story. Consoling. Well, the day's over, so just relax. Uh, discounting. Maybe you should be glad you have a job. Okay, we're gonna role play this. Uh, Gianna and I are gonna um, do a little example. There you are, Gianna, hi. Hey, Gianna, how's it going? Um, it's good. I've been having some trouble with some kids in my class. Really? I, I must have, I'm a, I got like a half a class of kids that just don't do their homework. So Gianna, if you don't mind, I'm going to be talking about myself for a while, right? Because, you, you know, I, I mean, I have to tell you about me while I'm socializing. You know, Gianna, um, maybe you should rearrange the desk in your class. Have you thought about that? I mean, that could really fix your problem. Gianna, there's a great book on classroom match. Have you seen this book? It's great. I'm using it. I'll, I'll, I'll get you the link for it. Okay. Oh, Anna. I don't, oh, uh, Gianna, look, I'm your friend. Every time I see you, it's the same story about your class. I'm sure you hear, enjoy hearing me analyze you. Yes? No, of course, right? We're, we're friends. Um, Gianna, look, the day's over. So get, relax. Don't, don't think about your class. Consoling. Did Gianna ask to be consoled? Gianna, with everything that's going on in this town, I think you should be glad you have a job. Discounting. How often do we hear that? All right. Uh, let's 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 show, let's show you what we call empathic listening. Let me go to the next slide. Hey, Gianna, how's it going? I'm really having some trouble with some students in my class. Wow, that's a lot. Something about empathic listening is you can say, wow, then a moment of silence. That's a, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. Moment of silence. I hear you. Yeah. Tell me more. My sister lost her job a few years ago. And for 400 days, I listened to her rail on her employer, rail on them. And I just kept saying, wow, yikes. She had a need to be heard. I, now you can also say, some, would, you like some, would you like some feedback? You're asking for an invitation. They, they can say, no, I, I just want it to be heard. Or the, if they give you the invitation, yes, but you see, we are often, not we, many of us uh, are wanting to make contact, wanting to make conversation, but we're at blocking up. Does anybody, can anybody think of a friend that they're no longer friends with because of some of these things? In addition, their storytelling got- get, I am, yep, that happened to me. Okay, thank you. Uh, in addition, um, okay, so, Who's in charge of the microphones? Because we, we haven't opened the microphones at this time. So, um, uh, then there's even judging, you know, you know, Gianna, you know, it's, it's, it's your fault. Um, so that's, that's, Empathic listening, empathic listening, empathy. You, there's books all over the place about empathy. They're 300 pages thick. How about just saying, I hear you? 
tell me more. Well, I coach couples. We, I get them to get, I, they're together, they're telling each other about things that they didn't like. And they say, tell me more. Those of you who have a significant other, how often? Try it. Next time your partner is complaining about something, you can say, I hear you. Tell me more. Shocking, right? Okay, so we are going to um, go to the next slide. So we say empathy is being interested rather than interesting. In one of our, uh, one of the first classes I went into in a school over here near the East Village, when we explained empathic listening to the students, we had a student who practically jumped out of her seat and said, I've been being interesting my whole life. We've heard from some of our students 10, 12 years later, how much this changed their life. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna ask everybody to go into a breakout room. And in the chat should be the uh, empathy blockers. If somehow you can't see it, it's very simple. One-upping, advising, educating, analyzing, consoling, discounting. Is it in the chat? Yes, it is. Okay, so we're gonna put everybody in breakout rooms uh, of like three people each and pick one person, somebody tell the other people about something difficult that went on for you, not something tragic, but just, and then empathy block that person. And then say it again and, and practice empathic listening. Wow, I hear you. Is there more to that? Would you like some feedback? No, I just wanted to be heard. Okay, somebody has their hand raised. Can we, is there a question there? Uh, TA, do you want to, can you open your mic and ask your question? Hi, I was just wondering, is there something different in empathetic or is empathetic just a different, I guess, um, verb or noun of the word empathy? Uh, what was the last part? Empathetic, like, is it the same thing as empathy, basically is what I'm asking. Because well, you said empathetic. Well, yeah. Listening, but I was also thinking empathetic. Yeah, there's two ways to spell to to say say it. We don't use the word empathetic because within that is the word pathetic. It don't uh -huh. let me want to uh -huh. say I don't want to be empathetic. I want to be empathic. But uh -huh. interesting, right? That's very interesting. Feel free to say empathetic if you're used to saying that, but we call it empathic or empathically listening empathically. So thank you for that question, TA. And um, okay, so uh, we are going to go into uh, the breakout rooms now for four or five minutes and uh, do some exchanges on this, all right? Are we ready, Chiana? Uh, yes, I just opened all the rooms. So you I, should be I getting think... an invitation. Okay. Um... Well, if you're guessing, uh, I'm needing some empathy right now because my knowledge of breakout rooms is early paleo, paleolithic. I hear you, Michael. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are the breakout rooms happening? Uh, yes, they are. Okay, great. Looks like most of the group is not in a room. Um, so they get an invitation, which I believe some people um, declined because they did not want to go into a room. Okay. And it says there were four unassigned people? Uh, yes, that is us, the TRF staff. Their last chance, because those of you who chose not to go into the breakout room, it's an extraordinary experience. One of the things that's gotten us into more schools than ever is the reaction response that teachers have when they do an empathic listening exercise. 
welcome to hang out here. Uh, it's an unforgettable experience. Okay, is everybody in the room that chose to go in? Yes, they are. Okay, great. Let's leave that slide on for now. This one? That one, yes, great. Okay, yes. I'm not sure if my volume's gonna work. Could I, would you mind if I test it real quick? Sure. The video? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear that? Nope. Um, you may have to unshare and then okay. there's an option to also share your sound when you okay. click the screen. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I see. Could you hear it now? No. No, okay. We're gonna skip it, okay? Okay, I'm sorry about that. You didn't do anything wrong. Thank you, Michael. We will skip it. Actually play it, let me see, let me see if we need sound. No, we're skipping it. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for letting me check. All right, uh, Gianna, let's bring everybody back in in about two minutes. Okay.
Okay, let's start to bring people back. Okay. Okay, the breakout rooms are closing and everybody will automatically be back in in uh, about 45 seconds. Okay, how are we doing? Are we almost back? Uh, yes, in five seconds, everyone will be automatically back. And yes, we are all good. Okay. Who would like to share about their experience? Well, we, I will be brave and start because I love my partner. She was amazing. She was suffering the fact that she couldn't be really bad listening. <laughs> she was apologizing because she wasn't able to be bad listening. But we were sharing things very important through our uh, practice. And we were saying that being an empathic listener is not just about agreeing with the person in everything that they are saying or showing us a smile, but also asking the right question or replying back what they were saying to make sure that we are actually getting the idea they, they, that they want to communicate. So it's more uh, really paying attention, really asking the right question uh, and making sure that we are understanding what we are hearing. Thank you. Uh, what's your name? Delia. Where are you from? New York. Bronx. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, who else would like to share? I'll share. And also, uh, Cynthia has, has raised his hand, her hand. Okay. Uh, I have hearing loss, so could you repeat that or? Monica, you want to go ahead and then I'll go? Sure, thank you. I'll share. Sorry, I didn't realize that, uh, that you had your hand up. I do apologize. Uh, in our practice, um, Maggie just made me feel very supported. Uh, I, felt, I felt seen. I felt heard. It really made me drop my guard. And it was like, wow, like somebody wants to hear. And it just made me feel... It made me feel loved and appreciated and seen. I'm complete, thank you. Thank you, Monica. Cynthia? Thank you. I I just wanted to share that I when I heard this list, I kind of gulped because I think of myself as being a really caring person, but boy, do I, I do behaviors that do create distance instead of connection. And, um, and it feels like a, like a, you know, letting that connection and real care and intimacy present rather than like proving I'm okay. You know, it's a really different place to come from. And I, I really liked this exercise because in such a quick moment, we could really feel the differences between how that, how that worked with us it was helpful. Make my day. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it, it's it, it. You, if you keep practicing it, you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. People in your life will share a, an issue, and all you have to say is, "Wow, that's a lot," and then silence. And if they say, "Well, well, don't you want to tell? What, did you want to have some feedback?" Oh, yeah, sure. You, yeah, I'd be happy to give you. But wait for an invitation. Sometimes that silence is so bonding, which I think uh, Monica had that experience. So thank you, Cynthia, where are you from? I'm from Michigan. <clears throat> okay. And Monica, where are you from? 
Ohio. Go Bucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sarah, did you want to say something? Sorry, I was eating, but yes. <laughs> um, it was great. Um, um, in our room, it was a little challenging at the beginning to connect because I guess it took some time to, to get the people together uh, and figure out what we were doing. And it was so hard to, um, to not be empathic, right? Like, I, like naturally everybody wanted to gravitate to being empathic. And then I, it was funny because I had to ask <laughs> that someone please give me a, a, some way of not being empathic to what I was sharing, uh, which was um, having a horrible digestion problems due to being pregnant and um, and I have acid every day at night, so I cannot eat like I used to. And um, so when that person did share something in a way that it was not empathic, um, I totally felt close, closing, like my chest closing, like I felt so different. It's, it's unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you, too. Um, uh, wh where are you from? I'm from Spain. Oh, nice to see you. Thank you for staying up so late. Mm -hmm. Oh, I live in California, though. <laughs> oh, you live in California. OK, uh, well, thank you uh, for uh, um, having a late dinner. Uh, OK, there was some question in, in the chat. Could some of the staff take a look at the chat? There was a specific empathy question. Okay, we have to move on now. Uh, if, if the staff could take a look at that empathy question, that'd be great. Okay, so um, let's go to the next, uh, next slide. Okay, this is the world conflict. Look at a newspaper, turn on the internet, the radio, the TV. What do you see? So much violence and it's gotten worse than ever. So my conditioning from an early age was to judge, blame, and shame. And it became an encoding in my subconscious mind. Judging hijacked my brain. Do some of us judge? Some of us judge all day long? Do you, if you see, let's say, a couple together, do you ever judge and say, well, what's she doing with him? And what's he doing with her? Or if you have a car, we don't have many cars in New York, and you and you you have the light, and someone's coming into into your lane, walking into your lane, and they stop and look at you, and it looks like they're going to go back, but they they keep going in your lane. What do you say? Well, when there's an element of NVC called observation, observation, feelings, needs, and requests. So you might be startled, you might be upset that somebody's in your lane. You, but, but often the judging words are going very strong. Anyway, uh, let's go to the next slide. So these are the essential NVC skills. We saw them relationship building blocks. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, as I said, observations is where very, it's very Zen to be in a space of observation and just see two people talking or one person and not judge them. Too tall, too short, too this, too that. Uh, many of us are very busy judging people. And um, uh, we're gonna look at feelings and needs uh, and then re requests in our longer workshops. Let's go to the next slide. Now we're gonna look at the needs list, okay? So what are needs? What are the essential needs in schools? Uh, take a look at this list. Uh, learning, obviously, right? Competence, those of you who are teachers or parents, competence, discovery, creativity, growth, community, the school community. Uh, needs for families, acceptance. These are in alphabetical order. If you look on the left, you'll see acceptance, affection, appreciation, companionship, empathy, love, and intimacy. So we use the need word in our everyday language. I need to get my car fixed. I need to get a new computer. I need a vacation. Take a look at the list. Does anybody see a car 
on this list. Now, a car could meet a need for what? Effectiveness, efficiency, movement, progress. Same with a computer in the middle, in the middle row. A, a vacation, what need does that meet? Rest, relaxation, maybe adventure, fun. So we start to get familiar with what our needs are. And of course, you can say I need to have a new car, but it doesn't really tell, explain what the need is. Okay, we're gonna do a couple short exercises. If everybody could take a piece of paper, eight and a half by 11 ideal, if, or whatever size you have in whatever country you're in, and uh, name three to five needs that could be met in any relationship, friends, family, co-workers, significant others. Take a look at this list. Affection, acceptance, appreciation, warmth. That's a big need for me because my mom was what? Distant and disconnected. So warmth is really important for me. Nurturing, intimacy, really friendship as well. I just take a few moments. This is a relationship practice. Looking at what needs, what are the things that you value? Under uh, the, the row uh, on the right, second from right, peace. Do you know anyone that does not have a need for ease, harmony, peace of mind? Underneath meeting is clarity. What, those of you who are in schools, what if I had been able, what if I had clarity in my voca vocabulary growing and I could raise my hand? Uh, I, don't under, I don't understand, I had a need for understanding and clarity. Smith, can you help Jazz? He, need, he, he needs clarity on this lesson. Yeah, I'll, I'll help him afterwards. Okay, clarity. So many kids are struggling with clarity. Okay, now could you list, Again, three to five needs that uh, are most essential to you. What are the needs that your highest priority needs right now? Maybe there's someone in your life who's behaving in a way that's disappointing you. So we could say they're inconsiderate. Judgment. I'll go. Or can we say, I have a need for consideration? Depending on the circumstance and who the person is, is to be able to say, I really have a need for consideration. And I'd appreciate it if you would, you know, return my office items. Or you can say, you know, that was really inconsiderate. Where is the need at the top? far left for connection. What happens to connection when we judge, blame, and shame people? And if you look in the middle column again, under physical well-being, well, what do you call somebody that doesn't have any needs? Can you put it in the chat? What do you call someone that doesn't have any needs? If you look well, one of the needs is a need for participation. Somebody doesn't have any needs. So I see a couple of different answers. Well, in the middle, you see food, air, water, shelter. So needs are about life. The needs are things that we value. Let's go to the next slide. Think about it. Everything we've ever done, everything we're doing now and everything we ever will do is to meet a need. But expressing needs is not a common way to communicate. We don't go to performance and when someone makes something makes us laugh, we don't say to our friend, that really met my need for humor. No, we say that was funny, but it is actually meeting a need. Our main need for doing this work is contribution. Is contribution one of your needs? 
that get, gets met by your job, maybe volunteering or simply helping a neighbor. We're not used to communicating in terms of needs, but we are constantly seeking to meet them. The prioritization of needs changes according to one's life circumstances and is unique to each person. Let's go to the next slide. Feelings, what are they? I feel like having a pizza. Do you feel like taking a walk with me? I feel like going to a movie. We use feel in everyday language. So how do you feel when your needs are met? Could you put it in the chat? When your needs are met, when your needs are really, really met, how do you feel? Serene, thank you. Content. Valued, validated, content. Thank you, everybody, for meeting my need for participation. See, we don't talk like that, but it's actually meeting that need. Well, let's go to the feelings list. The feelings list is part of a needs and feelings list. And this should be in the chat, I believe, our needs and feelings list. If it isn't, we'll get it in there soon, okay? Um, okay, so we call uh, these feelings feelings associated with met needs. We don't talk like that, but these are feelings we have when our needs are met. Uh, let's do another practice. Pen and paper, pencil and paper. How do you feel when you get the last parking space? Take a look at the feelings list. Relieved, delighted, happy. How do you feel? You're just, you're writing a few words now but you're actually practicing building a needs and feelings vocabulary. Bless, somebody said, well, that's a blessing, right? Got that parking spot. Uh, how do you feel when you accomplish a task with a deadline? How do you feel when you get some tickets to a concert you've been waiting to see for a long time? So these aren't what in NVC, what we call good feelings. They are feelings associated when our needs are met. All right, let's go to the next slide. Now we're gonna look at feelings associated with unmet needs. Well, take a moment. How do you feel? Don't get the last parking spot. Don't get the assignment finished and don't get the tickets. You want to write a few words in there, but it's good to, to, to put some things in the chat because it builds a vocabulary, frustrated. Many, the, this list is a lot longer because often we, we deal with situations where our needs are not met. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, we have students keep journals in our relationship classes in schools. And here's a journal entry by uh, a boy in the 10th grade. I got into an argument with my mother last night and for once used my feelings. I looked to see at my feelings, aggravated, stressed out, conflicted, detached and mortified. Yeah, I felt all of this, but why? Did I have a reason to be? What did my mom feel? Fearful, apathetic, heartbroken. I reviewed her argument and understood. I talked to her, explained that I actually took the time to do something productive and understand her view. I decided to put this into use and keep it. Wow. How many of you moms would like to hear your children respond in that way? And many of you maybe you do, or, or dads or caretakers. So my mom used to get really nervous about anything I did and I would yell at her. She passed about, oh my God, 19 years ago. And I would yell at her, uh, almost screaming, let me go, you know, stop it. I know what I'm doing, right? How about if I had been able to say to my mom, Mom, it sounds like you really want me to do well out there. 
and you'd like it if I could benefit from your experience. She would still keep nagging, but it would be different. I miss my mom. I miss that I didn't know the end, this NVC work to be able to say, mom, sounds like you really want me to do well out there. <laughs> yeah, that's why, you know, and, but still, and you'd really like me to benefit from your insights. That's right, Michael. But I think that the, that tone would have changed. Let's go to the next slide. We're gonna talk about something called non-feelings now. Non-feelings are not feelings. They're blaming words and they are conflict starters. So when you say, I feel ignored, what are you saying? What really is ignored? Well, I'm saying the person I'm speaking to is someone who ignores people. Big one. What if I say I feel disrespected? Well, I'm calling that person someone who disrespects people. So when you experience disrespect or ignore being ignored or abandoned, it's likely you feel what? Annoyed, disappointed, upset. There's my feelings list. These are recognizable feelings. Non-feelings, as you see when we go into the next slide, are essentially accusations. Okay, next slide. Have a look at what in NVC we call non-feelings. Many people use these words on a regular basis. I know I have, I felt let down. I felt let down when you didn't do what you said you were gonna. Uh, I felt manipulated. When you do that, I really feel manipulated. So these are blaming words. So take two of these words, everybody, please. Write two words, just two words that you've experienced, either someone saying it to you or you saying it to them. Let down, unappreciated. Let's take a, take a few seconds, just pick any. If, you, if you've experienced all of them, uh, you can pick, a, pick three. Intimidated, I felt intimidated. Whew. And we judge ourselves. I feel worthless. I, I feel inadequate. Guilt is not a feeling. Very common in our culture to say, I feel guilty. It's not a feeling. A long time ago, uh, I met a therapist who said, guilt is either pain, fear, or anger. And I was like, what? Well, let's say my sister says, can she borrow my car? I say, no, I told you, you can't borrow my car. Uh, I feel angry, right? Uh, later on, uh, I'm thinking, well, I'm kind of selfish. So I, I feel a pain. Uh, fear, well, she, she won't love me anymore. I didn't let her use my car, but guilt is not a feeling. Pain, fear, anger, think about it. Make a note if you like. Next time someone says, I feel guilty, say, what's the feeling? If you have your needs and feelings list handy. Okay, let's go to the next, uh, uh, next slide and look at these feelings associated with unmet needs. What about these feelings? Is it your, 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 your um, non-feeling? Your non-feeling, I felt abandoned. Oh, let me look at this list. Did you feel panicked did you feel gloomy did you feel this this is a practice has anyone ever experienced being abandoned and said i felt i felt abandoned i felt manipulated i felt disrespect well what's the feeling was it like grief hopeless well suddenly we have this big vocabulary to describe a non-feeling so we never use non-feelings anymore because they're fight starters I felt disrespected. Oh, so you're someone that disrespects. You're someone that manipulates. Mm, a lot of people don't like to hear that they're, that they're judgmental. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Strategies. Everything we do is a strategy to meet a need. A couple of years ago, I was going to a school in Queens 
And we have the kids, as, as I just read one of them, we have the kids uh, keep journals on how they experience relationships uh, personally and in society. So I asked the school, I had 54 kids in this class. And I said, um, <clears throat> could you buy some notebooks for the kids? Those, they're sort of like, look like uh, black and white speckled kind of notebooks. So we don't have any money. So I went to the 99 cent store. I live in the East Village. Uh, it wasn't that gentrified when I, well, it is actually. So, um, and I picked up 54 blank uh, notebooks. Big, big shopping bags carried up to my apartment, three flights up, next day down, get on my bicycle, put them on the handlebars, go to 14th Street and First Avenue. You probably have seen that in a movie, but you know, not necessarily. Anyway, I go there and get subway number one, the L train, and I take it to Union Square. Then I switch to the uh, six train and take it to Grand Central. There I switch to the seven train, carry these heavy bags, and I arrive in Queens, uh, Jackson Heights, Queens, and I'm coming down the steps because the elevated train. So you come down a flight of steps and there's a flat section and then you go down another set. As I'm coming down the stairs, I see somebody walking up really slowly. And I'm thinking, okay, oh, actually, th then I see somebody on the sidewalk with that hurried look in their face entering the steps. And if they went past the slow moving person, I'm going to have to stop on that flat section, stop in my tracks. They went around them. I stopped in my tracks. First words came to mind. Thoughtless, inconsiderate, right? I won't tell you what thoughts would have come to mind a couple of years earlier before I learned this, but thoughtless, inconsiderate. I made way, my way down the stairs as my foot touched the sidewalk, I asked myself, I wonder what their needs were. And then I start to imagine maybe they're rushing to the hospital to see their Aunt Eva, who met their need for acceptance, affection, appreciation, love, nurturing, empathy, warmth. All of these needs get met with Aunt Eva. I had an Aunt Eva who was like, she met all those needs for me. Then I thought, well, um, you know, I wonder if she saved somebody's life who was drowning a week ago. I wonder if she volunteers with her neighbor, if she raises money for senior services. And I started to imagine all the things that she was that weren't thoughtless and inconsiderate. My mind just clicked. And suddenly, this, it was a bright, sunny day. And I was like, I'm free. I don't have to judge. Well, I still do judge. But in that moment, I saw that I didn't have to. I don't know the people. Uh, Somebody cuts you off on your car. What do you do? You pull up next to them, you roll down the window and you say, that didn't meet my need for safety and stability. No, you idiot. Or some other words. What if that person saved somebody's life? What if they're rushing to pick up their child and the lights are going off in their school and they do community service? So we can think about what's wrong with people and I do all the time. I'll let you in on a little something that I, I talk. We're not going to talk politics at the end of this workshop, but let's just say there's a world leader out there who's causing a lot of grief for a lot of people. What I asked everybody on our project, I, I said, I wonder what his childhood was like. Next week, we'll talk about childhood trauma. So, Taxi, taxis, I live in New York. Taxis get really close to me. I ride a bike everywhere. You don't wanna know what I say as they get close to me. But after I say you mm, this, mm, okay, I say these words in my mind. Now I ask myself, what was that? That's my conditioning, a lifetime of conditioning. Imagine if we get this into the minds of children where they start thinking, well, wow, I really didn't appreciate that person's need. Do I have to judge them? <clears throat> so my repertoire of judgments had been larger than my vocabulary of words that describe what I was needing and feeling. So I curse people out. I curse them out in my thoughts, but never speak it anymore. So parents, anyone who spends time with a child, 
do you curse out other drivers? Don't do it in front of the kid. So do I appreciate everyone's strategy to meet their needs strategies? No, but my thinking has been so powerfully conditioned. How can a lifetime of habitual thinking that's constantly judging change? Practice, practice expressing my needs and feelings without blame or judgment. We're gonna do a final exercise, a practice to explore our needs and feelings so if everybody could get a piece of paper again, a blank piece of paper and draw, let's go to the next slide. Uh, let's draw a T on this piece of paper, but leave about an inch at the top to write something that annoyed or disappointed you. When I first learned this, uh, this T exercise, which changed my life, uh, I thought about um, uh, one of our board members were a nonprofit. Uh, we hope you give us a tax deductible donation. Did we lose anybody on that? No. Uh, he, he said, why do you waste so much time? Now think of something that's not, you know, something like that. Every day someone says, why do you waste so much time? How about get over it? Who in your life or even not in your life anymore? So if you will write down on the, uh, we go to the next slide. On the left side, feelings. Put the word feelings and let's go to the feelings list. Next slide. And what feelings did you have? When our board member said, why, why do you waste so much time? I felt annoyed, I felt confused. I felt worried because he was helping to raise money for us to go into uh, neighborhoods where schools didn't have much in the way of funds. It was really important. I was like, why do you waste so much time? I was felt disappointed. I felt uh, anxious, felt stressed out. Wow, now I have a vocabulary of feelings. You know, I'm a guy that grew, I'm a boomer. We, I grew up in a period where, they, where boys, boys aren't supposed to, don't show your feelings. My dad died when I was 19. I cried when I was 29. Holding in a lot of anger. Yeah, why do you waste so much time? Okay, everybody got that? Now, let's go to the next slide. And then on the right side, write the word needs. Well, what needs did I have that weren't being met? Let's go to the needs list. I need for respect, understanding, support. I need support. What feelings and needs came up for you when this person said something that annoyed or disappointed you? Well, now I'm getting a vocabulary of needs and feelings that I did not have before I learned NVC. becoming like a new voice in my head. I, I, what needs did I have? I need for friendship too. So let's take a few more seconds. What needs did you have that were not met when this person said or did something that annoyed or disappointed you? Okay, before we go to the next slide, draw a line under your needs and feelings. And let's go to the next slide and put on the left side feelings again. And let's go to the feelings list. But now, even if this person is not in your life, you don't want to ever see them again or you saw them an hour ago. How do you think they felt? When we first did this uh, in one of our classes and a class we held in East Harlem, one of the girls in the class said, I don't care how that person felt. They mean nothing to me. I said, just do it as an exercise. You'll see. What feelings do you guess? Do you imagine this person felt? You don't care, not in your life anymore. Or an hour ago, you saw them and you were annoyed by something they said. How do you think they felt? 
what could they possibly have felt? And why would you, why would you possibly care? Okay, let's go to the next slide. And on the right side, needs. What needs could they possibly have had? What could my board member, what needs could he have had? Effectiveness, efficiency, competence, progress, understanding. I don't know what his needs were. I'm just guessing. What I do know is I felt really annoyed when he said, why do you waste so much time? Now I'm, I'm looking at this other perspective. Well, what was, what was he feeling and needing? Well, I've never done this before. What if we have kids start to do this in classes? We're going to a class, our first in-class back in school, uh, uh, way uptown in, in the northern tip of Manhattan. I, I'm excited to bring this work to some 10th graders. We were working with a school in, in Jersey over the winter and in spring, but sixth graders were able to get in touch with their needs and feelings. Their brains have so much more room. We've had so many experiences. I hitchhiked 20,000 miles in my 20s, endless experiences, jumped out of planes, repelled off cliffs. 10 overnights in the extinct volcano in, in Maui the, and Haleakala. Lots of experiences, but sixth graders? So they have room to build their needs and feelings vocabulary. Let's go to the next slide. So here's a different world than we saw the world of, uh, uh, the world of conflict. This is the world of greater possibility where I'm looking at a, a people, a people with needs and feelings with strategies I just don't appreciate. Oh, it makes things so much simpler. I didn't appreciate their strategy. I mean, th this takes you out of judgment. During the last election cycle, never, never, uh, never said a bad word about politicians and they, they stir up feelings but not putting it out in the world, not putting the judgments out in the world. So that's a feeling, that's a uh, world of greater possibility. Now, on a scale of one to seven, how much closer are you? Did you get any closer to understanding this person? Could you put a number in the chat, please? It can be a one, seven, different for every person. Did you have a little more understanding about this person? Please put a number in the chat from one to seven. Thank you, everybody. You're really meeting my need for participation and community, putting that number in there. Some more understanding about this person who said or did something that annoyed or disappointed you. Even if you put in a one, it's like maybe just a little, little relief about who that person is. Okay, another few seconds. Please put in a number. Somebody put a question mark. That's like to have a discussion about that. Did anybody notice that they had similar needs and feelings as the person they wrote about? If you did, could you put, just say yes in the chat? Did you have similar needs and feelings? So now that you have a sense of NVC, you can put some of these skills into practice with people in your life. Needs helps us connect with our humanity and the humanity of others. It takes us deeper into an understanding of ourselves 
and the people in our lives. And it enriches the landscape of the brain. It actually installs new neurological hardware. Tonight, we installed new neurological hardware and we maybe lowered the volume on our judgmental conditioning because judgment's an addiction. And we can literally create a new identity by taking our attention off what's wrong with others, just with this simple practice. NBC is like building in muscle, becomes a new voice in our head, becomes a word bank that's forever growing and helps us build emotional literacy and acts in harmony with our values. It's a map to a new future. Let's go to the next slide. We believe in human potential and NVC is a part of that. So humans are a marvel of adaptability and change. And in this work, there's the potential for us to break free from the chains of our emotional conditioning. NVC helps us build a new level of emotional literacy. And there's the potential for all of us to develop a genius mind. NVC is a path to that. Well, we're almost finished. Uh, we're going to put the, our survey link into the uh, chat now. Please click on it, put it on your browser. We greatly appreciate feedback, how we can improve, some ideas you might have that we can add into our webinars. It's so helpful for us. But please put the survey form in there. And let's go to the next slide. Here's a quote from Bruce Lee. For those of you who are under 40, you may not never have heard of him. <clears throat> he was a martial artist. He was in films in the 70s. And uh, you might, he was a philosopher as well. Look at what he says. Don't speak negatively about yourself, even as a joke. Your body doesn't know the difference. Words are energy and cast spells. That's why it's called spelling. Change the way you speak about yourself and you can change your life. What you're not changing, you're also choosing. He speaks about how we habitually speak to ourselves. Well, what's a habit? A habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviors, notions, all acquired through repetition. And a habit is when you've done something so many times it becomes your known reality. Practicing NVC can become a new reality. Next slide, you see a few of our upcoming webinars. As I said, next, uh, next Tuesday, same time, we'll be uh, sharing about neuroscience uh, and how, how our, our brain chemistry is affected by trauma, how we can build resilience. And NVC is also a way to build resilience. And let's go to one more slide. Uh, these are some of our, our programs in schools and organizations. Uh, we do one, three, and six hour presentations. Uh, you can see our school and organization workshops, find out more about them. You can contact us directly uh, and set up a consultation. And our curriculum and guidebook are also available to be ordered for individuals or entire schools and organizations. And we can send you our curriculum digitally. If you are with a school or an organization and you think this work might be valuable to you, please put your email into the chat and the name of your organization, and we will send you some sample lessons, some sample sections. We don't call them lessons, we call them sections. And last but not least is our information here again. Next slide. Okay, there we are. There's our curriculum. We have a book. You can download our book on our website for free. And chapter four is a chapter on NBC. And I want to point out this book here again, Nonviolent Communication. This is the game changer. And we are taking it donated by the publishers in Spanish to the school we're going to uptown. So NBC is in a number of different languages. Here it is in Spanish. We recommend that you order NVC for yourself and order it from the, um, from the uh, publisher. They're called Puddle Dancer Press. The publisher named his company that because he was trying to think of a name and his son was jumping around a puddle. He called it Puddle Dancer Press. We don't support 
huge gigantic organizations like some that begin with let's say the letter a but i won't say their name i'd rather pay double to an independent company than than give money to uh, um, a, a, a huge conglomerate any of them so we recommend nvc no matter where you go to get it and uh again uh we're going to put our donation button in if you got something out of this if you want to donate a dollar, we, we get excited when we see a dollar. Anything more, we're great, really, really appreciate it. Um, and it, it helps us with our board of directors when they see that we can raise some funds on our webinars. But we have been doing these at no charge for 17 months, and we will continue to do so. And after what happened tonight, we, we're never going to stop. We want to really do, get this work, especially into schools at a young age, because all these people that go out, their anger gets so strong. You have no idea what, what how much anger I had. And, and over the last 10, 12 years as I've been practicing, people have said to me, you're different. Do you know any people in your life that you would like to see them be different? And different is they're easier to be around because they're not judgment, judging, judging is stress. So we're really grateful for NVC and the research that we've been able to find about resilience and neuroscience and sharing that with schools and organizations. Okay, so we'll move to our uh, discussion time. If anybody has a question or a comment, uh, happy to stay around. Uh, uh, always uh, appreciate it if you have a question or a comment, if you put on your camera for a few moments. Uh, would meet my need for connection. And thank you, everybody. Thank you for, for joining us tonight. And uh, uh, okay, TA, there you are. Are, are, are you, you want to say something? This was phenomenal. Thank you so much. This was definitely needed. And I'll be here next Tuesday for the childhood trauma course. Um, I'm really taking this for myself. I was an educator, but this course is personally for me, so I appreciate it and definitely want to donate. Okay, so my question is, if it's one thing to learn these principles at such a late age in life, and you said something about 35, but like, what if the people around you aren't learning these as well? How do you still motivate yourself to keep going? Especially the people right? around you aren't what? Learning these as well. Teach them. Most no teaching is one of the things that's up there. Advice yeah. and stuff. It's different for everybody. Um, I don't make. I don't. I don't get involved in a whole lot of chit chat or or friendly discussions anymore because I have no interest in hearing what's wrong in the world. I, if it's a rainy day, people say, "Oh my God, it's so miserable out there." Miserable. Without the rain, we would live on a barren planet without beauty and vegetation. Sometimes I say that to people, miserable, mother earth, thank you. I studied with, with indigenous elders in my twenties, sweat lodges, vision quest. Thank, I'm, thank the great spirit, thank mother earth. But it, it can be challenging. I, I think in the end, the message is we all, we all really respond to love. Somebody's complaining. I'm glad you asked that question because I still tend to tense up inside and judge that people that I'm better because I, I don't complain and judge. But, but thank you, TA, for because it, it brings up for me, I still have a ways to go. Where, where are you from, TA? Hello. Hi. I'm from Baltimore. Did you hear me? No, where's that? I was at Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore. I'm from Lancaster. We're kind of neighbors in there. Okay, well, thank you again. And uh, anyone else? Uh, thoughts, comments, criticism. If you have a criticism, sometimes people say some things that they think that about this work that doesn't work. And, and we want to hear that too, so we can bring it under consideration. May I have I a question? Please. 
you don't have to put your hand up everybody if you just start with a question whenever another one stops or or you can put up your hand so maggie uh are you in la yes i'm in la i want to thank you very much um i can't express how much I really appreciate an organization like yours and hope to somehow someday be able to support people like you and your messages um, even more so someday. And um, I just, I couldn't put a finger on it because I numb out and become dissociated, but I have been around places where such messages made me so uncomfortable and I didn't know what it was. I just would try to avoid those kinds of conversations and people and would just be praying like, oh no, no, please don't let that guest be visiting. You know, <laughs> it's like just cringing inside and not expressing anything because I've suppress a lot of negative emotions or even expressions myself because I was so bombarded with it and traumatized by it growing up I swore to myself I will not have an outburst of anger with such impulsive words that I would regret so now I'm in a place where I am numb and dumb and silent and so you have helped me to realize that need for that connection, which I've been trying to do with my body. What's my body feeling? What, what is it? I can't even figure it out sometimes. It takes me a while. And it's coming out in other ways in my health. So I realize it is leaking out whether I like it or not, and I have to address it. So I am very appreciative of what you've shared and I hope to even bring it to a um, small group that I'm a part of and have felt at times like cringing also because I hear on and on and on of frustrations. And it's like, I feel somehow, you know, um, vicariously traumatized <laughs> too. So I am trying to look at it with compassion. And now I realize how to look at it with compassion would be to understand where their need is in this and perhaps to change the conversation to, are you expressing some needs perhaps that I'm trying to understand from under that frustration? What is that need you are expressing that is feeling unmet perhaps? And I'm going to be having this conversation in a matter of a few minutes. <laughs> so this was just so apropos and, and, and just so timely. Um, and I just cannot thank you enough from the bottom of my heart, instead of avoiding the group, I can try a different way of conversing. And so you have given me some tools and I have felt like I was misjudged at times. And so I just caught quickly shut down. So now I can have more tools to be more courageous. And I appreciate that. And thank you. Thank you, Maggie. It's better, Maggie.
Well, some of the staff people that are here tonight, um, you can say goodbye. Um, we'll see you in the morning. And I think we only have one person necessary. And I will stay on as long as people want to share. <laughs>